I brought her in. It took a while to walk them both over. Well, what's wrong? Why are we suddenly cold here? Did someone suddenly get sick? I I'll begin preparing compressed stat. Ouch! Me, 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 me. What'd you call me in here for? Did something happen? Dr. Young, Miss Jensen, you have my gratitude for taking the trouble to come here. This won't take long, so please relax. Tell me what in the blazes is going on! Ha ha ha, of course. We called you here because something came up. Judge Courtney, just what are you planning? Bonnie Young, under the divine rule of law, please answer truthfully. There were no mistakes in your autopsy report, correct? Manny would never make a mistake. That's certainly strange. Huh? What's strange? This court has found an error in Dr. Young's autopsy report. Dr. Young, please tell the truth. Did you falsify the autopsy report? That's terrible! How can you accuse her of that? I have no idea what you're talking about! Why would I do such a thing in the first place? To protect the true culprit, of course. What you talk about? I would never do such a thing! How strange. In that case, why would there be an error in the autopsy report, I wonder? Prosecutor Edgeworth. What do you think? Um? Oh, I expected you to press into her statement like you normally do. Why is she taking control of the situation and trying to help me? I don't know what her goal is, but I must play along. If the autopsy report you gave to Sebastian had been authentic, then the error should not have been there. Oh, wait a minute! <coughs> I didn't do anything! That is what we will figure out from this point on. Firstly, Dr. Young, I'd like to hear your testimony. Why do you want to hear my test her testimony? It will be pointless. I'll be the one who decides whether or not it is pointless, not you. There are patients waiting for us. <laughs> but, but Granny, ouch! Anyways, we don't have time for this. Is there any way I could convince you? This is of the utmost importance. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, Granny says she'll testify. So please, try to finish this quickly. If we don't return soon, there will be people in terrible suffering. And yet you were lollygagging about on the viewing platform earlier. I promise you this won't take long. Only if she tells me the truth, of course. Double face in the thing. Alright, talk about the error. There are no mistakes in Granny's autopsies reports. I've been working with corpses longer than you've been alive! There's no way I'd make a mistake in writing the autopsy report, ouch! I got nothing to gain from falsifying the autopsy report. Mmm. Here's what she says, see? There's nothing strange at all about the way that we talk and interact with each other. Nothing strange at all. Eh, <laughs> yeah, that's right, you know. There's no way she'd falsify it, you see? Under the name of the Goddess of Law, do you swear that this testimony is the truth? Of course! Granny would never tell a lie. Objection! We were asking Dr. Young. We do not need to hear from a third party. Uh, I'm not a third party. I'm on Granny's side. If you raise an objection to my testimony, you'd best prepare yourself, you ex-prosecutor. <coughs> <coughs> I will definitely expose the contradiction in the autopsy report. Rebuttal. Okay. There are no mistakes in Granny's autopsy reports. <clears throat> so you're saying there's no way Dr. Young could have made a mistake? Of course. Doctors can't afford to make mistakes. 
This is a world where just one misdiagnosis can end a long career. I know that my granny, at least, would never. If I did something like that, do you think they'd still let me in a hospital? I've been working with corpses longer than you've been alive. So in your long career, you've never once made a mistake. A doctor's only as good as the link to their track record. <laughs> if we're just talking about a lengthy track record, that former chief prosecutor has one too. And yet his actual abilities don't seem to measure up. I hope that you're not the same as well. Ouch! That's a low blow, you know. But you know, Edgeworth, I don't make mistakes either, you see. Because, you see, before I can make a mistake, those around me would have already made it instead. <laughs> you see, I don't have time for mistakes. It's quite amazing. You know, it must be karma. You can't compare a chief prosecutor with a doctor. You really can't. There's no way I'd make a mistake in writing the autopsy report. Ouch! <coughs> the victim wore this raincoat after suffering a blow to the head. And yet there was not a single drop of blood on the front of the raincoat. Therefore it is impossible for the head wound to have been post-mortem. Um, well that's... Ouch! I don't need you to tell me that. That's what I wrote down from the very beginning! Objection. The autopsy report says the head wound was post-mortem. That's completely different! Uh, uh, yeah. I relate to Karen what to put down in the autopsy report. After that, it was none of my beeswax. Relate to Karen? Please elaborate on that. I relate everything to Karen. After that, it was none of my beeswax. Whoa. Whoa. What? I would like to verify once again what you saw when you examined the body. Um, like we said, ouch! Oh, well, about that. She was done in by a chump to her noggin. A thump to her noggin. Dr. Young, do you know when that happened? Before she died, of course, the wounds on her chest were post-mortem. That's the opposite of what everyone's been saying. That's what I relate to Karen, so that's what I should have been unwritten in the report. That's what you relayed to her, eh? I'm finally beginning to see the truth. Karen? Karen? What's up, Karen? I got nothing to gain from falsifying the autopsy report. I kind of want to press these, but this, that's huge. That's huge and obvious. You have nothing to gain, but how about your granddaughter? Me? Th there isn't anything I could gain. If Karen had something to gain, then that girl of yours might have something too. How dare you accuse my little girl who has never done harm to anybody? Yeah, aren't you ashamed of yourself? She should address those words to Blaze instead of me. I swear that the autopsy report wasn't falsified. Is what she says. See, isn't this strange at all? Did you notice anything strange when you were performing the autopsy? I wonder, huh? What is it, Granny? A strange man came by. Who are you calling strange? He wore some really strange clothes. He even had a frilly thing around his neck. Even though he was about to get canned, he still tried to run amok during my autopsy. I'm talking about you, you frilly red brute. Oh, I see. So Mr. Edgeworth is a strange frilly red brute. Okay, please don't only remember odd things about me. Um, he doesn't look like Granny is lying. Hmm. Miss Jensen is the one who is relaying Dr. Young's words. I have to confirm whether or not Miss Jensen is telling the truth. Okay, so... 
You relayed everything to Karen. Um, and, but, in that whole set of things, you said that the head wound is actually what killed her, and that then they stabbed her after she was already dead. So they wrote the opposite Objection! of what it actually is. That didn't go away immediately, and I was like, ah! Dr. Young, please confirm what this autopsy report says with your own eyes. Oh, I'll read it out for you. Ouch! Eh! Oh. This autopsy report wasn't written by me! <clears throat> what? What do you mean? Oh. Whoa! Uh, I don't know! <coughs> but, but Granny, I I can't say that. Miss <coughs> Jensen, if you're trying to keep the truth in the dark, then in place of the goddess of law, I shall hear your confession. Judge Courtney is talking with Dr. Young in private. What? Is that true? Understood. I shall convey your words to everyone else, Dr. Young. I properly relayed the autopsy report orally to that child. It seems my granddaughter must have mucked it up when she was writing it down. Wow! She mimicked her voice perfectly! Oh, I didn't. I didn't bother. There was no need for her to go that far, though. <clears throat> that would have been funny. In other words, the contents of the autopsy report have been falsified. By your hand, Miss Jensen. I... I... With that, we've proven the wound on her head came first, followed by her chest wound. Miss Jensen, why didn't you falsify the autopsy report? Hold on a second. She never said she falsified it, you know. She just made a teeny, tiny mistake when she wrote it down. And, you know, intentionally wrote the opposite of what happened. Post-mortem and anti-mortem sound kind of similar, you know? They are complete opposites. That is the very definition of falsification. Miss Jensen, why would you lie? Okay, ouch! I want you to tell me too. Why would you do something like that? Granny, but I... Because you falsified the autopsy report. Kay fell under suspicion. Tell me why you did it. I... I can't say. I... I just can't say it. Not I don't want to say, but I can't say. You're all a bunch of bullies, you know. Ganging up on this poor girl who leaves her grandmother, so... Uh, she's totally unrelated to this. I think we can forgive her for one tiny mistake. That won't do. Aren't you the one with the most to lose if she testifies? Huh? What are you saying? You see, as a former prosecutor, you have to speak a little more clearly, you know? Very well. As you wish, I shall answer clearly. Miss Jensen played an essential role in this case. She was an accomplice, I would say. Most likely. Um... Because I don't, she's not the victim. I don't think she really did it. Miss Jensen falsified the autopsy report in order to assist the true culprit. Oh, ouch! <laughs> this girl is an accomplice? What is your basis for that claim? It was impossible for a single person to commit this crime in the first place. The crime could not have been committed without at least two people, namely because. Um, the report couldn't have been faked, um, the number of people wouldn't match, or the victim wouldn't have been moved. Is it because, did she come back down in the costume? Is this why there were 11 people and then 11 people? The matching? Because you could have moved the victim. <clears throat> Someone else could have faked the report, but... 
there were 11 people and then 11 people. So someone died, but no one was missing in a masked auction. If the conductor was the culprit, and one of the auction guests was the victim, it would contradict the witness's testimony that there were 11 people after the incident. <laughs> what now? You got a problem with my testimony? Not at all. Rather, it is because I believe your testimony. That's why an accomplice must exist. Now you still won't admit that your reasoning's wrong. Objection! Up until now, we had not even considered the possibility of an accomplice. However, if there had been an accomplice, it changes the entire story completely. If the accomplice took the murdered auction guest's place, then the number of people remains 11. Oh, I see now. So that's what you're thinking. Now, you know, wouldn't that have been quickly discovered? Miss Jensen, the victim of similar physiques. If she wore the victim's mask, she could have easily taken her place. Miss Jensen, did you switch places with the victim? <coughs> I, I, I wouldn't. Who was the conductor? In other words, tell me who was the true culprit. I, I can't. I mean, that would also cause trouble for Granny. Ah, ouch! <clears throat> but Granny... I'll accept whatever wrong she may have done. Just tell me everything. G gr granny! You popped her hair! As I thought, it appears you really were the accomplice. Miss Jensen, why? Miss Jensen, would you please tell us? Yes. It's okay, Granny. I'm fine now. I switched places with the victim, Miss Crane. So you admit to being the conductor's accomplice? Yes. I helped out the conductor. I don't really know why, but... For some reason, the conductor was expecting to be attacked by Miss Crane. The conductor expected an attack from the victim. They were so sure it was going to happen that they came up with a plan to counter it. A way to beat the victim at her own game. And that's when I was called in. I was told to wait in the storeroom before the auction began. Whoa there, you ain't full of my eyes. If you waited in the storeroom, I reckon I would have bumped into you. After all, I've been up in that store on the entire auction. I'm telling the truth. I wonder about that, you know? Can we really believe a girl who would falsify a report? You know, maybe we'd throw her in jail and never talk to her again. Objection! <laughs> there should have been many places to hide in that storeroom. And by all means, tell me, where did our little nurse hide? The place in the storeroom where Miss Jensen hid was... Um... Good hiding places? If I... I don't have a lot of hiding places to present. And since I don't think she was hiding inside the horn of the bull, and I don't think she was just standing there behind a mask, I don't have a lot of things to show. So, is it just the costume trunk? I think we're just speculating and kind of bluffing with this. But the costume trunk is a good place to hide. Take that. She hid inside this costume trunk. I think we're bluffing. A costume trunk, eh? Now that you mention it, that box was already there before I snuck in. I figured I'd hide in there myself, but it was wrapped up nice and tight with a chain. And it was locked too, so I had to give it up. I suspect that when you stayed in the room, Miss Jensen was already inside the trunk. Um, yes, it would have been bad if one of the guests from the auction had opened the lid. After instructing me to hide inside, the conductor wrapped a chain around the costume trunk. That would be claustrophobic as all get out. I knew you were downstairs and using the lift shortly thereafter. It was right before the auction. So then when the auction began, only you and Miss Hart were in the store. Yes, that should be right. The auction had been going on as usual. 
but when a certain participant made the winning bid, the conductor committed the crime. His heart preserved the altercation that occurred then. You bet you I was trembling behind that there statue the whole time though. Following the altercation, Jill Crane was murdered. After killing Jill Crane, the conductor carried her body to the costume trunk. Miss Jensen, who had been hiding in the trunk, was made to take Miss Crane's place. The victim's body was placed inside the costume trunk. The conductor then took Miss Jensen, who had been made to look like Jill Crane, and returned to the auction hall as if nothing had happened. Was this roughly what happened in the storeroom during the incident? Yes, that's right. Paul and the old switcheroo was one of the auction guests. Ain't that impossible? That gal and the murder victim are two completely different people, you know? Don't you reckon one of the other participants would have noticed and caused a ruckus? No, not at all. The reason they didn't notice the switch was because... Um... Of, I guess, the costume, the mask, and the voice changer. To use the victim's name. Hi, it's me! Jill! Hello! No. From what I can tell, Miss Jensen and the victim appear to have a similar physique. Furthermore, there was a rule requiring a mask to be worn during the auction. If their clothes were the same, I doubt anyone would have noticed she was a different person. Yes, I blended right in. I borrowed Miss Crane's clothes and ouch! You must embarrass the dead like that! I know. I also thought it was pretty heartless to leave her exposed like that. So when the conductor wasn't looking, I covered her up in the raincoat that was up for auction. So she was the one who put the red raincoat on the victim. And then the auction resumed as if nothing had happened. I reckon it took the picture of her in the red raincoat after that. That didn't make, that make all the facts line up. After I took the photo, I went over to the lift to sneak a peek down below. I witnessed the 11 participants, and then I high-tailed it back behind the statue. Don't tell me. You were hiding there the entire time until we found you. Nah, that's... Where should I put it? What is it? Did something happen? I didn't mention it before, but after that I might have dozed off a little. To be more precise, I fainted. Or something like that. So, so something did happen. Hey, it ain't no big deal. Kind of embarrassing to say, though. There was this thump sound all of a sudden. I was a little surprised by that. It was right after I just witnessed a murder, so I was shaking in my boots. My heart sort of tightened up, and I was off to La La Land. When I woke up, it was already the next day, around the time y'all came by the storeroom. I see, so there was a large sound. Miss Hart, I think you, you do not know what transpired in the storeroom beyond this point. I, I guess. At the auction, all the masks were properly returned. So I reckon the participants had exited through the storeroom just like I done said. Hmm. Miss Jensen, what were your actions after the auction resumed? I took the victim's place and participated in the auction. The conductor instructed me to win the bid for the costume trunk. Because the body was inside it. It would have been bad if another auction guest won the bid for it. You didn't realize the box was empty. No, we only found out when I came to the storm to pay the bill. The conductor was with me and told me to go search for her immediately. And then, I found another girl collapsed in front of the ladder. Okay. Yes, she would probably fell down the roof and lost consciousness. Maybe the victim left the hatch open when she went up to the rooftop? I understand now. Kay was surprised at seeing the collapsed victim and did not notice the open hatch. She must have missed her footing and fell down into the storeroom. Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was like the sound of Kay falling onto the storeroom floor. That might have been it. No, I reckon it'd be kind of pathetic to faint over something like that. When Miss Jensen found the unconscious Kay, Miss Hart was also unconscious behind the statue. 
The situation is becoming clearer to me. Miss Jensen, please continue your story. After I found Kay and the victim, I put them both in the trunk. If the customers at the auction found out, there would have been a huge commotion. Was this an order from the conductor as well? Yes, it was. But since I secretly decided to put the raincoat on Miss Crane, I had to dispose of the raincoat without the conductor noticing. Heh, <laughs> so the conductor didn't anticipate the raincoat becoming another piece of evidence. And finally, we dressed Miss Crane in a spare conductor's outfit. I see, in doing so, you made the victim appear as if she was the conductor. In the end, the auction ended without anyone noticing anything. Hmm. Miss Jensen, your crimes have become clear. If you know anything else, please hold nothing back. I want to help you more, but that's all I know. Um, if I had to say, there's just one more thing that bothers me. When I took Miss Crane's place, I borrowed her clothes. But there was no way for me to borrow her hair. Ouch! What kind of corner systems goes around stealing on Corpus's hair? I would think that robbing the deceased of their clothes would be questionable enough. Both the color and the length of our hair is different, so I was worried about how to disguise it. However, the conductor even had a wig prepared for me. In fact, he had two of them. Inside the costume trunk, there was both a straight wig and a wavy wig. Two wigs? Why were there two? In case she straightened her hair? I guess. Who knows? Maybe it was a precaution in case the victim had changed her hairstyle. I ended up using the street wig to match Miss Crane's hair. So that means the wavy wig was left unused. The wavy wig. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Is that really all you know? Yes. Uh, yep, that's really all I know. So that means you don't know who the conductor is. I'm sorry, I only knew that person as the auction conductor. I never saw that person without a mask on. The conductor seemed to be on guard towards everybody. Uh, at this rate... <laughs> Edgeworth, is that all you've got? Even if that little nurse is an accomplice, it changes absolutely nothing, you know? In the end, the true culprit still K. Faraday. All you do is add another criminal, you know? The true rule of law cannot be overturned. At least not for your sake. Is this as far as I go? Am I unable to save K? Objection! Hi, Franny! Francisca, why are you here? I tell you, Mars Edgeworth, that ever there is a case, I will follow. Prosecutor Von Karma, your hard work is most appreciated. However, don't get the wrong idea. All I can have to find out the truth behind what happened to K. Faraday. I don't plan on forgiving you for abandoning the prosecutor's path. I understand. You should thank your former subordinate. He gave me some valuable information which may save K. Faraday. Lady Gumshoe did. Listen well, Mars Edgeworth. This will be the final piece of evidence. Jill Crane suffered the wound on her head first. Yeah? Can someone say something? Mm, uh, um, well, I hate to say it, but we already proved that. Already proved? Ah! Yes. Well, just a few minutes ago. Ah! You should have told me sooner! You're the one who barged in here and started talking. Belton, does that mean you found out what the murder weapon was already? No, not yet. <laughs> Is that so? In that case, listen well. The victim was struck on the head with a blunt cylindrical object. The wound on her chest was suffered post mortem. A cylindrical murder weapon. Objection! You know, this poor years. I tried to attack here, of course. She was killed with the gavel, wasn't she? Because the gavel was missing. 
autopsies for the results of two independent autopsies carried out by two respected doctors. Objection. That's reassuring, but it's too bad. You have no right to investigate this case. Interpol is after the black market auctions, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of the investigation. The victim participated in the auction. Therefore, it is only natural for me to investigate. Therefore, um, especially now that she's been murdered. I see. I see. Clever girl, Mon Karma. It has been settled. The victim died from blunt force trauma to the head. Unfortunately, the murder weapon has yet to be found. <laughs> Just knowing the shape of the murder weapon gives me an idea as to what it might be. Hey, hey! In my investigation, we didn't find any other murder weapons, you know? If you consider the conductor's possessions and the crime scene, the answer should be clear. The blood cylindrical object used in the auction hall was... I think... Oh, all the options are gavels. Judge Courtney's gavel specifically. I think it was just an auction gavel. It was something the conductor had in their head during the auction. All the options were gavels. Namely, an auction gavel. An auction gavel? And we didn't find anything like that! If the culprit is the conductor, it is possible that the gavel may be the murder weapon. However, that alone is not reason enough. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, I have proof to back it up. This piece of evidence proves that the murder weapon is op the auction gavel. Um. What proves it? They just updated this. Blunt, blunt trauma to the head made by a cylindrical object. Oh, you think it was Lada? That makes sense, actually. The auction continued even after Joe. However, the sound of the gavel was not heard afterwards. Because the gavel was MIA straight away. According to Ms. Hart's testimony, after the victim had been murdered, it seems she suddenly stopped hearing the sound of the gavel during the auction. However, she had been able to hear it up until then. Why was that, you asked? No one did, but I'm going to say anyway. It was because it had been used as the murder weapon and was covered in the victim's blood. It became necessary to dispose of it. Isn't that right? Why wouldn't you just have a spare? You have a spare gavel, right? Blaze the best. Mm. I'll have a search for the murder weapon performed immediately. <laughs> well, good luck with that, you know. You gotta work as hard as you can while you're young, you see. He's completely confident that we won't find it. Well then, while the search for the murder weapon continues, I hear my call for a brief recess. Be continued. That was a long one, guys. Find out what happens next time. We're kind of getting close to the end of this thing. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't by now. Have a good one. Bye for now.